What is going on? Um, I'm gonna go through a quick tutorial. I say quick, but I'm usually pretty long-winded about this kind of stuff, but uh, I'm gonna get into a little bit of how to use uh, Sprite something. It's a new uh, editor or I guess um, modification tool for Super Metroid for changing sprites, specifically Samus' sprite, uh, to something else. So, um, big shout out to uh, Artho and Mike Trethaway for designing this and letting us uh, kind of mess around with uh, Super Metroid a little bit. It's pretty cool. So, I'm going to go into a little detail about how to, uh, to go about doing that. So, um, for starters, we'll just pull up the program here. So I'll put a link in the description of where to actually get this. Uh, it's still in the beta stages of development, so you're probably going to see an official release come out um, in the not-too-distant future. And um, there's going to be some other features added to it, I think, uh, kind of down the line. Other other features like possibly uh, ability to modify the uh, title screen and other things like that. Other graphical changes. So this is probably the first iteration of this that you're going to see, but um, the main focus of this is to, to change the sprite um, to something else. So basically the first thing you want to do is pick a sprite that you want to work with. So um, if you're more interested in uh, porting something over to Super Metroid, for example, um, I did uh, the Contra sprite. So the, the Contra from, or sorry, the... Uh, the main guy from Contra, I can't even think of his name right now, but um, basically you want to go and figure out, well first of all you want to figure out if it's possible, because uh, there are some limitations to what you can do really um, in terms of size and color, so the easiest thing to do is to pick another sprite from another Super Nintendo game, because obviously it'll translate well and um, the size should be okay and the color depth should be fine too, so um, I'll just show you a couple websites here where you can kind of go in and uh, have a look. So there's a couple websites um, out there that actually contain a lot of uh, sprite information, like sprites that have already been ripped from different games. So that's um, where I got my information from for uh, Contra. So one of them is called thespritersresource.com, and then the other one I used was called Retro Game Zone. So a couple different websites. There are other ones out there. I mean, even if you do like a Google search, you can usually find uh, some sprite tables from other games. So. Um, basically you just select the game, oops that's the wrong console, so go to Super Nintendo, and go to C for Contra, and there it is. So, um, actually I'm going to use the other site just to kind of a little bit quicker on the other side. It's a little bit more uh, definitive on the sprite grab for uh, Contra. Where is it? There we go. Okay. Cool. So, um, what it'll do is it'll give you the um, all the animations for the main character. So, you can see here it's all kind of laid out. Uh, kind of... Um, you know, everything from the standing animation all the way down to running and jumping, and this one even has the top-down view, which is interesting because you can't really use that in anything but a, I guess a mode 7 kind of setting, but um, when you, literally all you do is you just kind of copy this and then uh, paste it into your paint program um, and then start making your edits, so let me just kind of walk you through that. So the first thing you want to do um, is get yourself a decent paint program. Uh, I mean, you can use anything really, anything that can modify images with transparency, because uh, the sprite table is stored in a PNG format, so there's a transparent layer that everything kind of sits on top of. So um, I use a program called PaintShop Pro. Uh, it's it's pretty ancient. I used it in high school, literally, and it's. I mean, I'm just familiar with it, and it's got a lot of tools that I know how to use. So I kind of stick with this. But you could use like you know Paint.net or GIMP or something else. So, um, first thing you want to do, because uh, this is where you're going to be doing, like, 99% of your work is right in here. Um, Sprite something is more or less a tool to view the changes you've made in real time. So you can see on the window here, there's, this is obviously Zelda, but we're not going to deal with Zelda today, we're just doing Super Metroid. Um, so you can see in real time the different animations, different poses and stuff. Um, and this also allows you to modify a ROM. 
to actually reflect the changes you've made. So um, first thing you want to do is go ahead and open the sprite table. It's included with sprite something in, in the folder. Um, let me just back up here and show you where it's buried. It's a little bit, a little bit buried in here. So if you go under app resources, under Metroid 3, under Samus, and Sheets. So I've got a few other things already in here, but uh, the one you want to load up is called just called Samus. Open that up, and this will give you your full uh, sprite table for all of her animations, all the palettes she uses, um, everything from like, you know, the loading, like loading on the ship, all the way down to like the death animation. So everything's there that you need to change, all in one image, basically. So um, let's have a quick look here. So kind of working from top to bottom. Um, now, Mike and Artho, they've kind of released a more detailed description of what everything is here, if you can't just kind of tell by looking at it. So the first uh, first table here you see is the palette um, for everything you're changing. So if you go into here, I'll zoom in a bit. Um, so essentially, the way sprites work in a Super Nintendo, you've got a 64 by 64 pixel limit. Um, we don't have that big of a canvas to work with. Basically what we have to work with is everything within these blue lines. So this is important, like when you're choosing a sprite, you want to make sure you're going to be able to fit everything inside here. Um, if you get something that's too big, obviously you're, you know, you're not going to be able to fit it, it's going to be cut off. Um, something too small, um, you know, wouldn't really line up properly with the uh, elements of the game. For example, the, like where the, where the shot comes out, like if you're just shooting the pea shooter, um, the positions where the bullets come out, or bullets, whatever you want to call them, um, they're all fixed, so they're they're aligned with the cannon that's already you know with the sprite that's here, right? So when you're choosing a sprite, you want to kind of work with something that um, you can easily modify. You can you know change the gun position. Um, that's why I chose Contra for my first attempt because it's um, it had a lot of different animations that I was able to, to kind of port over without too much hassle. So um, basically, so getting back to the palette here. Um, these are all specific to different things. So as, as you go down in rows here, each palette kind of has a different purpose. So the first three rows are Samus's suit. So you've got the basic power suit at the top. Oops. Sorry about that. You've got the basic power suit at the top. Um, underneath that is Varia. So there's it's basically the same, except you can see these colors here and this color here are different. So basically all it's doing is um, changing the accent color on the suit. So it's not actually loading a different palette per se, it's just kind of changing the uh, um, the values of three different colors here. So, and then you go down the next row and it's, it's gravity, you can tell by the purple color there. So, um, the next few rows, um, probably not going to be messing around with too much. The fifth row here, sorry, the fourth row, is, has to do with the death animations. So if you're going to be changing the, your death animation to something else, you're going to have to change those, col those colors around too. Uh, this row here is your crystal flash animation. And then this row down here is the uh, the file select menu, um, like in the main screen when you go to select your file. So um, just quickly, these these three little tiles here uh, are the, the palette for the uh, the visor. Um, it just it basically uh, determines what the color of the visor is when you're entering a dark room, I guess. I haven't really played around with this too much, so I don't, I don't know exactly what the purpose of uh, changing that would be. I guess just the accent color of it. Um, these three over here are the ship. Uh, so when the ship, like near the landing site, um, I guess the, uh, the glow color and the different accents on the ship, you can mess around with those if you want. Um, so getting back to the... Uh, palette for, the, for Samus herself. So this is kind of where you need to start thinking about where you want to go with this. So I'm just going to load the Contra one, just for example here. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, there it is. Okay. So. So just to, whoops, just to kind of compare these two. Um, you can see that I've had to change a lot of the colors in this table here, right, to kind of reflect the sprite. 
So that's that's so that if you um, when you load a different sprite or when you start dropping a different sprite into these boxes, uh, the colors will be be reflected accurately. So if I were to just not change this and start dropping sprites in there, um, the good thing is sprite something will approximate the closest color, but it's not going to look like it should, right? So you you want to change the colors in these table to reflect the sprite you're using. So um, the way I do that. Uh, is... let me just find the uh, older file here. Where are we? So... What am I looking for? Oh, right here. here it is. Here it is. Okay. So, once you've selected your sprite, you've grabbed the table for it. Um... You want to make sure it's a, tra a transparent background. I should talk about transparencies a little bit here. So PNG files have a transparent layer, or they, they can, they have the capability of that. So when you grab your sprite off of uh, you know the website, for example, this should be transparent. So you can literally just save the file, open it in your paint program, and then it should show up like this. And then you can just literally just drag and drop, or you know select, select a frame of animation and uh, copy that. Control C over here. Control E, and you can just drop it in there. So, when you're changing your colors in the the palette, um, what I or what I found was easiest is just kind of temporarily drop a sprite there. Um, like I was saying earlier, SNES sprites have a 16 color limit, so this should be all of 16 colors contained within this sprite here. So. Um, this may not be the easiest way to do it, I'm not too sure, maybe there's an easier way, but this is this is the way I did it anyways. So there should be a tool called Eyedropper, most paint programs should have that, so it's literally just a tool where you can actually select or click on a, any color in the, in the image and it'll, it'll change you know your paint color to that, so um, all you gotta do is you gotta go in and start droppering all the different colors in the sprite, so we'll start maybe some, from top to bottom for example, so you grab color of the hair and then you click your, click your paintbrush. And these are 8x8 eight eight squares, so all you gotta do is just change the color of the square, basically. So click on that. Move on to your next color, this reddish color. Drop that. Actually, I'm gonna skip that one. I'll explain why later. Uh, drop that in there. Grab your next color. Say face. Drop that in there. I skipped that one as well, I'll explain that to you. So basically what you want to do is you want, you want to replace this row um, of colors with the colors of the sprite you want to use. Hopefully that's clear as mud. Um, the reason for that, like I was saying earlier, is so that it'll be, act it'll be more accurately reflected um, to the original sprite. So like if, if I didn't change that, like I was saying, it's just going to approximate based on the colors available in this row and it's not going to look very good. It's going to look washed out or just, you know, be the wrong colors altogether. So, so you want to do that. You want to set up your palettes. Um, now talking about these three colors here, that color there, and these ones here. So, um, I'll cover this one first. So this this green color, you really just want to try to avoid changing that. That's the color of the visor. Um, you can see down there, it's the same color as the visor. So this um, is actually kind of a fixed element. Um, I, I messed around with it once, and it kind of messed up the uh, the fade in, fade out between door transitions. So um, I would probably leave that alone. Um, you can try changing the whole row to a different color. I'm not sure what that would do, but um, you can experiment. But um, my recommendation is just don't touch that. <laughs> don't touch it, put it down, leave it alone. Um, and then uh, moving on to the other one. So these three, and then these colors here. So those are the colors that will switch when you go to a different suit. So for example, like I was saying, the top row is normal power suit. Next row is Varia. Next row after that is Gravity. So um, this is where it gets a little bit confusing because you want to you want to select these, you want to place these colors here. Um, how do I explain this better? You want to pick accent colors, right? So say you want his uh, pants to change red, right? When you switch to Varia, 
So you want to drop her those specific colors. So like the outer color, the inner color, and then the other inner color. So drop her that. So the darkest of the three shades, um, you're going to want to drop into there. And then the next darkest color, you're going to want to drop there. And then the lightest color, uh, yeah, drop right there. So what this essentially does is it just changes the accent color. So now when you go, um, you don't really even need to change those. Um, I mean, you could if you wanted to, but what will happen in this case is um, when you switch to Varia, it's going to change those three accent colors to red or different shades of this orange and yellow. The same thing with gravity. I'll, I'll try to demonstrate that later, but it's a little trickier to do in, in real time here. But um, Getting back to the palette, so once you've gone through and changed all your colors, you're good to go. You can start dragging and dropping your uh, different animations in. Um, I guess I'll just talk quickly about these other rows here. So the death animation, um, if you're going to be changing that, then you're gonna, it's the same kind of deal. You're going to have to change the colors to reflect what you've modified with the death animation. And this rose your crystal flash, same deal. Um, you know, if you want to change anything to do with that, you got to adjust the colors. And this last one here is your uh, file select menu. So if you want to change any, um, if you want to change the helmet, turning around when you select a file or the, the visor, um, you got to make sure you reflect that in here too. So, um, okay, so moving on to uh, the main the meat and potatoes of the sheet here. So as you can see, there's a lot, a lot of stuff to change here. It's pretty daunting actually when you first get into it because um, Super Metroid's unique in that there's different frames of, pr <laughs> frames of animation uh, depending on which way Samus is facing. So it's it's kind of a subtle difference in a lot of cases, and not many. I haven't seen any other game that really does this, but you can if you just to kind of show you here. So when she's facing right. You know, the arm cannon is on the, the outer side there. When she's facing left, it's the opposite, right? So, depending on the way she's facing, it's, it changes what uh, animations it uses. So, um, it doesn't really mean anything in terms of changing, other than uh, if you modify one side, you have to do the same to the other. So, you can... You don't have to do that. You don't have to have separate frames of animation for the left side. You know, like... Determine, you know, depending on which way she's facing, you don't have to do that. But what you do need to do is make sure you copy this side over to that side, or copy the side, mirror it, and then copy it to that side. So I'll kind of demonstrate a little bit, um, maybe just with the running animation here. So let me grab. Where are you? There you are. So if we go into our contra table, um, we can see that the top row, well, the top two rows are the running animations. So. Um, so we'll grab this one, copy that, we go down to our other one. Now Samus has 10 frames of running animation, you can kind of see that there. So you gotta start deleting what's in there. The way I do it is I just select the area, delete, select the area, delete, and so on and so forth. I'll just do the first view just to kind of demonstrate here. So from there, um, you just want to copy over your new animation. So control E. And you just kind of start dropping in the new animation in there. Go on to the next frame. Control C. Go to here, control E. Go to here, control C. Okay. Oops, Got a little chunk down there from somewhere else. Oop. Control C. Control E. You kind of get the idea. I'm not going to go through all this. And Control E. 
Okay, so that's kind of the idea. Um, you know, just to kind of go in a little more depth. Um, specifically with the running animation. Now, um, whatever source you're drawing from, so whatever sprite you're taking and putting into this, um, you're going to have to make some change. Or, well, you're going to have to modify how it works, basically. If, if you don't have exactly 10 frames of running animation from your source, which Contra didn't, it had less. I think it had like 8 or something. Um, <clears throat> that's where you're going to have to get a little creative. So what I did was I doubled up uh, a couple frames. So, for example, you know, you run out of frames here. That's the end of Contra Guy's running animation. So then you start doubling up frames. So you take two of the same frame and just drop it into two boxes and then it's um it'll work it, it you know it's not too noticeable when uh, when you see the running animation but um you're gonna have to do that probably in a lot of cases because there's a lot of there's a lot of material here to replace and uh super metroid has like an un unnaturally large amount of sprite data <clears throat> for uh for the main character so it's you're gonna have to uh fill in some things here and there so but that's kind of the gist of the process right now obviously going through all this um, you're gonna need to make some changes like for example the gun on this guy is longer than Samus's by a little bit it's not a big deal like when he's running straight but if you look at when he's pointing down uh, where is it here yeah so the position of the gun is so low on this sprite that it doesn't line up with the shot so what happens is you'll see the gun pointed down, but the shot comes out like, you know, 10 pixels above that. So it kind of looks strange. So I, I had to make a few changes um, to the position of the gun. That took some finagling. But that's the kind of stuff you're going to run into when you, when, you, when you work with this sort of thing. Because the uh, positions where, that, where the, the shot comes out, they're all fixed. So you can't change those. So that means you have to change the sprite to accommodate a lot of things. Um, which can mean a lot of work. <laughs> that's why I'm saying pick a sprite that's easier to work with. Like, this was pretty easy. Well, I shouldn't say easy. It wasn't, but it wasn't, like, daunting. Um, you know, Mega Man X has already been done. I mean, a lot of a lot of the sprite from Mega Man could probably translate well here. Um, <clears throat> so let me just quickly demonstrate how, how you transfer this into sprite something now so you can see what you've actually changed. So you want to save this. Uh, where are we file? Save as. I've already kind of started a demo sheet here, so I'll just use that for now. Save. So save your PNG file. Sorry, I'm getting tired. It's late. Um, and then when you go into spray something, uh, what you do is you load that PNG file. So open. And where's our demo? There it is. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. So load that. And then give it a couple seconds, it'll refresh here. And there we go. So, um, focusing back on sprite something, so um, this whole side here controls kind of the, the, the environment or, or what you want to see basically. So once you've loaded your PNG file, um, you can select your background if you want to change that. It doesn't really do anything other than just change the backdrop. Um, in this screen you can move the sprite anywhere you want. You can zoom in, there's a zoom function here. Uh, you can change the speed of the animations, so faster or slower. This is helpful if you're trying to align sprites within a box. More on that later. Um, not sure what that does. Okay, anyways. Um, you can pause it, you can advance frame by frame if you want to see very specific details. And this cycles through the different poses, so rather than frame, it cycles through each pose, I guess. Like, this is based on um, the actual game cycles, so like 60 frames per second, this is actually poses, if that makes any sense. Anyways. Um, then down in this drop-down menu, you can select the different scenarios, like, you know, running animation. Uh, where are we here? Oops. Play. There we go. Okay. So all the different uh, poses, you know, you got everything 
Crystal Flash, Morph Ball, all this. So you can basically look at any set of any frame set for the stuff you modified. You can see it in real time here, which is pretty handy because you can see the changes, you know, almost instantaneously. Like if I make a change here, you know, see I delete this dude. Do that, sorry. Change that. I save it, save my file, my image, and then you just come in here, click reload, and then it'll automatically reflect the change. So let's pull up what we've changed so far. So just the standard running animation. So you can see it's kind of split up into uh, Contra Guy and Samus. That's because I haven't changed these last three ones yet, so that's why it looks like that. But um, So you can see how it uh, reflects in the actual running animation in the game. So, uh, like, alternatively, you can uh, actually save this to a ROM and load it up in an actual game, like a flashcard or a emulator, and you can actually play through it and see how it looks in the game itself, too. So that's another option, too. So, But, um, yeah, all these buttons here, you can change the facing direction, angle. And then these reflect the different suits. So various suit. Gravity suit. That looks really strange. That's, the palette's not correct, so that's why it looks all weird. Uh, variants, so um, Shine Spark, Blue Suit, whatever that is, Hyper Beam, Heat, Darkness. This is weird. I don't know what that is. Like, Petrified? Or Transitions. Just a quick note on this. So you can see how the visor stays lit through door transitions. That's what I mean, if you change that palette color, this green color here, it messes that up big time. <laughs> Anyways, don't touch it. Uh, and then you can select, uh, if you want to check the cannon port. Um, the cannon port is a wonky thing. Uh, let me just talk about that quickly. So all these little spots here are the cannon port. So the problem with this is it's it's essentially fixed in its position. You've got a bit of leeway um, with respect to uh, where you can position it. Like, like, you can move it up or down in this section here. This is aim up, so you can move it up or down a little bit. These are all the angles. Um, they're basically fixed, you can't change those. And uh, left and right facing, you can move it left or right a little bit, maybe even like four or five pixels. But beyond that, it's pretty well fixed. So um, what a lot of people are doing are just deleting all the information in these boxes here, just leaving it blank, and then just like doing away with the cannon port altogether. So it's it's a lot of it's a lot of work to get this to line up properly. So um, you know, if, if if you just want to delete everything in these boxes, that'll work too. Um, where was I here? Okay, yeah. So one one more thing about uh, sprite something. Now, when you want to inject this into an actual ROM, uh, say you want to test it out, so you just uh, go up here under this button here, it says inject in a game file, you click that, and then, um, <coughs> excuse me, if you have a ROM that you want to use, like it'll work with anything basically, it works with vanilla, it'll work with a randomizer ROM, or uh, anything else basically, it just, it basically replaces the, uh, the tile set for the sprite, so you know, you can just you can click that, save. Ask if you want to replace it, click yes. And there you go, it's all done. So now when you load that ROM in an emulator or uh, flashcards, it's going to show all your changed sprite data. So it's pretty simple. Um, I recommend doing that, actually, because even though you can see this, um, once you get down to controlling the character and you know, seeing how it actually performs in, in the game itself, um, it gives you a better idea of, you know, the fit and how the sprite performs, like, you know, in terms of the hitboxes and all that. So it's, it's a good idea just to load into the ROM once in a while and just play it for a bit, see how it looks. Okay, uh, moving on a little bit here. So that's kind of the gist of what you gotta do. So essentially you do that over and over, replacing all these with the new sprite. Um, just kind of going back to the left and right scenario here. So once you once you fill out an entire left side, um, a little trick you can do rather than going and doing each one like box by box on this side, literally just copy this entire row 
This is what I was doing. You copy that. Control C, paste into an image. So we've got this entire row of running frames. Now what you want to do is mirror that. So you go image, mirror, flips everything around. Control C for copy. And then you just paste in on this side. I'm not going to do it, like actually do it, but just to kind of demonstrate. So, you know, you do that and that saves you a ton of work. So you're not going box by box. Obviously you got to erase those first, but you kind of get the gist of it. So everything you do on this side, you got to reflect on that side. So just kind of keep that in mind. There's a few frames of animation that are like direct center, uh, camera facing animations. And uh, kind of like halfway in between, so quarter turn, camera facing, another quarter turn. Um, if you're not sure about these ones, the quarter turns, um, what I did in the Contra was just copied this frame over to that and just found a front facing animation. And then it's, it's, it's very subtle, the turn, so it's not really a big deal if you copy this row. I copy that one to that, and this one to that, this one to that, and just have the front facing. Um, cause it's a, it's a pretty quick turn, you don't really notice if there's any, uh, you know, detail missing from that, those frames there, so. Um, okay, what else, what else? Um, so yeah, it's kind of the gist of what you gotta do. Um, with alignment, um, I kind of did this quickly, but it, position does matter within the box, so kind of the basic rule of thumb is you want to keep the sprite uh, as close to this alignment as possible, like with the original Samus sprite. It's gonna it's gonna vary a little bit depending on which sprite you choose, but it's it's a bit of a trial and error thing. You gotta just place the sprite, try to keep it centered within the frame. You know, load it up in uh, sprite something, see how it looks, and then kind of go back and adjust things as you need to. You might need to reposition a few frames depending on how it looks. Uh, if you want a smooth running animation, like you'll need to kind of make sure they're all in the same position. So that's one thing to consider, because if it's not aligned, which it's not right now, it, the sprite kind of bounces all over the place. So you're gonna have to tinker with that just to get it aligned and make it look like a smooth running animation. Um, yeah. Uh, so I'll go into a little bit of detail with the menu. This is kind of a little bonus feature here. You can change the actual uh, animation for the file select. And uh, the little cursor for the file select, and then the border surrounding that too. So let me just pull up the uh, this guy here. So you can see what I did here. I stole the um, stole the skull from one of the the bosses from Contra, shrunk it down, and uh, replaced that. Um, I had to change the palette for that. So that is this row here. And then um, so the first three frames are just the turning heads. The rest of these frames just reflect the eyes, so there's literally a rectangle in there that changes. So you can change the, uh, you know, the frames of animation for that. The cursor itself I changed too to a little fireball, and then I just changed the border to a red. Um, and just kind of going through here, so I should probably mention too. So uh, Arthos put together a little guide here kind of to, to reflect what each group of animations affects so you just kind of got it sorted by standing animation crouch run moonwalk jumping animations these are landing uh, falling animations x-ray animations grab by drag on like who knew that had its own set of animations it's insane the amount of sprite data there is in this game bonk deboost spin jump wall jump shine spark uh, space jump, screw attack, all these morph ball animations, like, it's just insane. Uh, crystal flash, exhaustion poses when you get hit by rainbow beam, grapple, oh, grapple, oh, grapple. <laughs> uh, touching on this a little bit, so there's a lot of different animations for grapple. Um, there's a neat little tool called uh, Rot Sprite, Rote Sprite, it, essentially all it does it's very basic, but it, it'll take an image. So say you take this center hanging image here, uh, load that into a uh, rot sprite, and then you select um, the range of angles you want to rotate the sprite. 
So say it's from like, you know, negative 90 to 90 degrees, it'll actually spit out 10 frames of animation automatically with all the different angles, which is super helpful because going through it manually doing all this would suck. Um, so I highly recommend that. I'll, I'll try to put a link for that in the description too because it really helped me out with this part of the uh, modification. So, um, where was I going with this? Yeah, yeah, because grapple is obviously a tricky thing because um, you can't... Finding sprite data with this many rotation angles is pretty difficult, so... That really helped out with that. Uh, and yeah. Death animation right there, you can change that if you'd like. You'll have to change the palette too. Um, background and foreground, so this is obviously Samus. This is the suit exploding, so... With Contra, what I did is I just deleted this because I didn't really use it. I changed just the death animation the the background. Um, Okay, other resources, if you if you want to look into specifically, more specifics about the palettes, uh, Mike's put together a little uh, blurb here on that. So it's pretty handy, If it, it'll go into detail what each color does. So with respect to the actual suit, um, it tells each palette position, and then if you scroll down a bit, it, it tells you exactly what each color does. So it's going to tell you like what part of the suit, or all that stuff, so... It's a good resource if you're um, getting into uh, changing the palette like very specifically. So thanks to him for that. It's a little bit confusing, but uh, it's very detailed. So uh, yeah. So as you can see, there's a lot of work to do if you want to tackle a project like this. But it's pretty cool. It's it's a fun learning experience. Um, you know, it's got some creative creative gusto to it. I mean, you gotta really figure out what to do with um, all these different frames of animation. Like, it's... <laughs> like, just to give you an example, this uh, space jump animation is not even part of his normal animation. I actually stole this from one of the bosses. Um, same with the morph ball animation. I took that from uh, a different boss in Contra 3. and just kind of adapted it to make it work with this. So you gotta get a little creative, but it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty rewarding. Um, <laughs> the death animation is, uh, straight out of a MA-17 movie. But hey, that's the creative spark. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think that covers pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. It's kind of a basic intro to this. I mean, obviously, it's a lot more involved than simply dragging and dropping. You, you gotta do a lot of work. I mean, I had to modify a lot of the sprites for this manually, like, drawing to the best of my ability, like, with the crouching animation. Like, this is all kind of custom. Um, I had to change the gun position to line up with a shot. So you're, you're going to be dealing with that kind of stuff, and it really, you know, can't really get around it if you want it to look authentic, so... So yeah, I think that covers most things for beginners. Um... Let me just probe my brain for anything else I might be forgetting. Uh, I don't think so. Anyways, um, yeah, if you have any questions about uh, development for a sprite, feel free to hit me up on Discord or, you know, through Twitch DM, whatever. I'd be happy to answer any questions. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with this. I think we're, we're going to see a lot more features being Im implemented in the future, um, like I was saying before about, uh, you know, some of the, the title graphics and other things, so it's, it's cool to see what they're doing with it, so, uh, yeah, and just FYI too, this Contra Sprite is available on the Varia Randomizer site now, so you can use it, and, uh, hopefully we'll see more people contribute and, uh, do some creative stuff. In any case, I'm gonna sign off for now, and, uh, thanks for watching the video, hope this helps you guys out. Have a good one.